Hello everyone, my name is Andy. Today is Saturday, July 15th. Time is around 1.20 GMT. And we will have a look at the Dow futures on the Oanda platform. So it's Saturday, markets are closed, but uh, during the weekend, I always do an analysis of the higher time frame. Um, the weekly, the daily for investors, but also for uh, traders as a preparation for uh, the trading week. And so uh, this weekend, I actually uh, reworked uh, two of my um, indices, like the I did the new Elliott Wave analysis for the FTSE, and also for the Dow, I made some um, I made some changes, like before, it looked like um if we look at the daily it looked uh something like uh, like this here that we would do uh like this wave three to the upside in um in the higher time frame but i do not really feel uh comfortable anymore with um this or i don't want to make this my primary scenario like this is this is still one scenario that can play out, but I don't think it's the most realistic one. Um, and yeah, therefore I look at the other indices. And so if you follow my, uh, my work, then you should know that uh, the FTSE already turned uh, bearish in my opinion. Um, the DAX is bullish, but it's an um, ending uh, upwards structure, in my opinion. And also the NASDAQ overall bullish, but the upward structure is, in my opinion, also ending. So if this is our situation, then yeah, it's not really likely anymore, I think, that the DAO will make this uh, good push up here into this wave uh, three area. As you can see, like, uh, and I also emphasized this um, during my uh, yeah, videos on weekdays, like this is rather um, sideways price action. And like, even if we have a very bullish day, like um, if the NASDAQ and the DAX make a good push to the upside, this push to the upside in the Dow is always limited or in uh, or has, uh, or from a smaller uh, magnitude. So, it becomes a bit unlikely that we will see this uh, push here. And uh, therefore I, uh, I updated my, uh, my Elliott wave count for the Dow in the higher time frame, And so uh, we will have a look at this count uh, right now. So if we start in the, the weekly, my take on the DAX is that from the March 2020 lows, we did um, an impulse here to the, to the upside. Uh, so a higher degree wave uh, one here. We did this in uh, five waves: one, two, three, four, five, ending with divergence. So this is uh, this is a complete structure in my opinion. So then we went down as a wave two corrective move ABC um, structure. Normally we should reach this area as wave two. So this area is. Um, the area that we can find by taking the length of wave one and then a wave two should normally go into the area between the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.854 fib retracement but it looks like we returned a bit above this uh, 0 0.5 level and so from here uh, we could see more uh, upside now um, yeah our long term target would be this uh, wave three here this wave three in the higher degree we can find by taking the length of uh, wave one the length of wave two and then the area between the one and the 1.618 fib extension is the area where our wave three should go of course um yeah this this looks very uh, bullish and this might also play out in the long term but um yeah this is not for uh, for tomorrow of course we will need five waves up uh to get there and so for now i think we will soon uh finish this wave one here to the upside uh, this i will discuss in a minute i just want to highlight um still another possibility uh another scenario or bearish scenario in the weekly 
which would be that um no i cannot move this i wanted to move this wave too like that this correction is not over yet and that we have something like this that this was only our wave a but then i think i would label it as a as a wxy structure but i'm the point that i want to make is that we can still do something like this in three waves one two three down so that the corrective move here one two three down was um not completed but that uh, this will be the corrective move and that we actually retrace into uh, this area, which would be um, a valid wave uh, too. But for now, I do not really have reason to, uh, to make this bearish scenario in the weekly, my primary scenario, because as you can see, there is quite some separation between this low here and the current uh, price. And so therefore I, uh, I prefer to stick with uh, a bullish uh, scenario for now in the weekly. And this bullish scenario would mean that we have a wave one, then a wave two retracement, and then we should see more, uh, more upside as, um, as a wave three. So let's have a closer look at, uh, at this now. And therefore we, uh, take uh the daily yeah on the daily it's almost uh the same we will immediately jump to the to the four hour like this was our high this was our wave too low and so now we are working on um on this wave one and so because uh like i told you because um with the data i have now uh the ducks looks to have is bullish but looks to have an ending uh, upward structure the nasdaq is also bullish but it looks like the upward structure is um ending and the FTSE already turned um bearish this means that yeah for the dow um we should also have some kind of structure which is ending uh soon so and therefore i changed my uh my elliott wave count so i believe this uh scenario in the four hour here is now more aligned with what i see in the other um, indices and so i believe we did our wave one and two um here then we had our impulse to the upside as a, as a wave uh three this is uh, clearly impulsive then it looks like we had a nice abc correction um here so that would mean that this is our wave four. So normally a wave four, sorry, this is wrong. I have to take the low here. So if we take the length of wave or wave two as a starting point, wave three as an ending point, then our wave four here should uh, go into the area between the 0 0.382 uh, FIP retracement or uh, or less, of course, but I like this uh, 0 0.382 FIP retracement level and uh, 0 0.618 FIP retracement level. Personally, I, I also prefer the 0 0.5, but okay, these like, according to the rules, this is the, the upper limit of retracement, the 0 0.618 FIP retracement. So we went nicely into this area and what we also see is that uh, we had a nice ABC correction. If we take the length of wave A, the length of wave B, then wave C should end between the one and the 1.618 FIP extension. And this is what we did. We went nicely into this area and then we moved uh, up again. And so, yeah, if we should also have a structure that is ending in the near future in the Dow aligned with uh, the other indices, then for me it looks like uh we are finishing here wave five with an uh with an ending diagonal it looks like this was our wave one this was our wave two again uh, abc correction here we nicely bounced here as uh, as wave two wave three to the upside and then it looks like last uh week we had our wave four and now we are um, yeah, going up again. I think the last push up as a, as a wave five, 
before we complete this uh, this structure here, this wave five and this higher level wave one. And from there, we might see more uh, downside. So yeah, as an investor, like um, not much is uh, changing compared to my earlier analysis in the sense that, um, yeah, you don't buy, you definitely don't buy uh, here. You wait for a decent uh, pullback. This is what I always have uh, said. Like you wait for this wave to pullback. But um, yeah, I think. And if you are long as an investor, I think we will uh, we will reach an area where you can take uh, profits. Um, I. Yeah, I would be surprised if we really have um, a good push up here in the in the Dow. Simply, if I look at the other indices, they are ending, and the Dow has shown the past uh, weeks and months that it um, is less uh, stronger than uh, than the Nasdaq, uh, for instance. Like we only has a sideways sideways uh, price action here, so. I would be surprised that we see um, a good push up here. So that's why I also changed my um, my Elliott wave count. So I don't think for investors much is changing. To buy, you wait for uh, for this uh, wave to pull back. Now we are um, more in an area where you can consider taking uh, taking profit as this is ending um yeah this is what i would do like i told you i don't expect uh, a big move up here anymore of course it is uh, it is always possible but i try to interpret the data uh as good as possible i also um take account of uh, the other indices and this for me now looks the best or the most realistic um, count I can make um, considering the data I, uh, I have or the information I have. And so for traders uh, next week, yeah, I think we might expect a bit more uh, upside here. So there will uh, definitely be opportunities for, uh, for long trades. But if we really reach the end uh, here, but this is something that we should analyze then on the lower time frame, uh, yeah, we can also consider to go short or we wait till we till we have um, turned here, till we have a bit more uh, confirmation. This is also what we can do. But this is for next week and the analysis on the lower time frame. So, okay. That's it for today, my higher time frame analysis. If you enjoyed it, please uh, like, subscribe, comment to support my work so I can further grow this channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.